good morning. Welcome to Peterborough on a misty October morning. Um, my name is Deljit Singh. A lot of you call me Del. Uh, early this year, I was asked to film uh, what I call a magical history tour of the Millfield uh, area here in Peterborough. Um, actually taken aback by so many of you watching it, making some really nice comments um, about the video and possibly about me too. So, so much so that we're back doing a part two. Uh, because there was a lot of areas that were not covered. So, thank you and welcome to Magical History Tour Part 2. We're here on Cromwell Road, um, special connection, obviously I was born on Cromwell Road, it's where my journey started, so a little bit further up Cromwell Road was probably an area I spent a lot of my childhood sort of playing around in, and it doesn't look the way it did does now. Back then in the 1970s, all of the area I'm looking at here was pretty much industrial, um, there were factories that had really pulled out of here. There was a metal box. So you actually had a metal working factory and a stonemason's right in the middle of housing. But for us as kids, it was quite amazing because when the factories pulled out, there literally were playgrounds. There were derelict buildings that we played in. Um, and they backed onto sort of Cobden Avenue over that way. But it was terrific. We had the run of the place. They were slightly dangerous, but um, it was great fun. And on the other side over here, we actually had what was Hobson's. It was a, a community youth project playground area and the local kids were involved in that. I remember and there's you might see some photos around of the old Hobson's bus so there there were many sort of tours and days out using the Hobson's bus and the volunteers that sort of looked after the children. So that was quite something. Okay so here we are on Cromwell Road where it meets with Cobden Avenue and Cobden Street and the building behind me is of real significance to me not in its current form as a clothes shop but basically what was the first Sikh temple. So back in the 1970s there was no dedicated Sikh temple and the house in the corner was owned by Mr Randir Singh Wahiwala who owned the Wahiwala stores on Russell Street. He donated this and it became the first Sikh temple. In fact my late father in 1974 became the first president of that Sikh temple. So, so there's been a strong familial connection with the temple. Behind me is Cobden Street. Now this is actually steeped in history. People won't see a lot of this because sadly a lot of that history disappeared. Um, so, just up there, the white building is what used to be the Ukrainian club. It's now, I believe, a nursery. But the big gaping hole next door to the gap there used to be quite a large building, a chapel. Um, and for many years, in the 1900s, it operated as a chapel, a place of worship. Towards the kind of 40s, 1940s um, and 50s, it actually became a centre for what was British Relay, British Relay Wireless, they were called. And it was effectively where television was being broadcast and disseminated around Peterborough. So this is way before cable and satellites came out. People used to actually not have air rules in their rooms. They used to have television piped in. Admittedly, it was just a couple of channels, the BBC channels, and then later ITV. And British Relay um, obviously went bust. I think they bought by Rediffusion, um, and then they are no more. But the interesting thing is, all the way down, right to the end, I know it's quite foggy today, but that would literally be the cut all the way to the railway station. So you'd go through Glasson Street, and there was no Borges Boulevard, remember, back then, and you literally would be at what was the rail yards. And a lot of people living along here used to work on the railway, so a lot of these houses around here were occupied by rail workers who used to work directly over there. So Borges Boulevard cuts through there now. But again, a really historic part of Peterborough, sadly, which a lot of that's now gone and I is missing, but it was quite remarkable, especially the big chapel building there. I remember that in the 70s, it, and then in the 80s, it became a furniture warehouse of some sorts. But uh, sadly, a bit of disappearing Peterborough. Okay, so here on Gladstone Street, and behind me is Gladstone Fisheries. Now, this is probably more of a, a 70s and 80s fish and chip shop. This shop was actually owned by Alan Walker, um, and his family. It's a really small because it looks like just literally a house and a doorway there and it as was as you walked in there it was just a counter the fryers and that was it. My first experience here was actually a scallop. There was no such thing as a bloody scallop and all of a sudden this guy started doing scallops so as well as chips you got scallops so thank you Mr Walker for your scallops they were quite delicious. Um, the Walker family kind of gave up this and it was then taken over by a Chinese family who ran it as a fish and chip shop through the 90s uh, closing probably around the late 1990s. Here at the top end of Gladstone Street here, behind me is what was quite an iconic shop dating back to 1966. This is Piccolo Guadano's and it was Carmine Mangieri and his family that ran this for the Italian community. And the Italian community was instrumental in building Peterborough. The Italian community, when I say built Peterborough, they didn't necessarily put the bricks up, but they made the bricks that built Peterborough because a lot of Italians worked at London Brick. 
over towards Fletton. And in fact, there's quite a large Italian community still over Fletton Stand Ground, and the Italian Community Association is based at the fleet in Fletton. So Carmine Mangieri actually opened Piccolo's, and Piccolo's was really the first delicatessen in Peterborough of sorts. And I have a memory of it from my school days, because it was one of those shops you wouldn't go into unless you were buying from a deli. But there was one summer's day when the shop up the road there ran out of ice cream, so no funny faces, no sort of fabs, none of those. So passing by, I saw a sign which looked like ice cream. I remember going through those curtains, which were those plastic curtains, those wavy ones during the summer that smelled of roses, and greeted by this gentleman in there. I said, do you sell ice cream? And he said, ice cream? I have gelato. And I was like, what the hell's gelato? But he gave me this tub, which was beautifully whipped heaven. Um, and it was quite remarkable. It was actually expensive. But uh, there goes my week's pocket money on one tub of ice cream. But it was quite something. But he was a lovely, large and life gentleman, Mr. Mangieri. And sadly, the, the shop stayed open for a long time. 2019, he passed. And the shop obviously closed. The signs have come down. There's a little in memoriam card I can see in there. And what's quite beautiful is across the road there, I see a sign saying Food for Naught and the Carmine Mangieri Centre. So somebody's dedicated that to Carmine, who was obviously a lovely soul, served the Italian community uh, and served Peterborough so well for so many years. OK, so look, here we are. We're at the top end of Gladstone Street and Taverners Road. This is a really interesting corner because I used to go to school at St Mark's just opposite. So the shops and places around here mean a lot to me. I mean, over here on the one side, it's now Lala Jewelers. It used to be Eagles News Agent. Those guys did the first no more than two school kids in at a time because they would be overrun by school kids when the bell went. So they used to limit the number of school kids coming in. We used to buy our comics, our sweets, ice creams, drinks there. But it was a lovely shop. It's now a jeweler shop. It used to be Eagles News Agents. And across the road is a post office. And that post office over there dates back to the 1900s. Building behind me is actually Gladker. That's one of the first community projects here in Peterborough, the Gladstone Street Community Association project, helping a lot of people that come into Peterborough from out different countries. So back in the day, this was a laundrette before it became Gladker. The history of this place goes back even further, as exemplified by this plaque here. So John and Annie Sage lived here with their kids and effectively they ran a bakery back in the 1900s but they decided to emigrate and they got a ship to america sadly for them that ship was the titanic and all the family basically of nine children and two adults were lost it was the single biggest loss of family on the titanic and that blue plaque which a lot of people don't know exists sits there as a commemoration of that sad family Behind me is basically the run through from Taverners Road all the way at Westwood Bridge. Um, and what used to be Baker Perkins, you could probably see it from here, but sadly not anymore because the prison is now there. So, but it's a really, really busy road with the school across the way. So definitely need a lollipop person here. Okay, so here we are on Occupation Road. This is New England. And, and behind me is what used to be the Imperial Cinema. But even before it became the Imperial, I think people knew it as a cinema, it was called the Bug Hutch or the Bug Hatch or something like that, but people have memories of this as a cinema building. Um, but funny enough, it started off life back in the kind of 19, the early 1900s as a working men's club. Um, so it started as a working men's club, and I think it then, um, over the, the decades, turned into a cinema, originally kind of like showing um, the films of the day back in the sort of 30s, 40s and 50s. But then it closed down um, and it was reopened back in the 1970s by, again, it was a Sikh family that opened it, turned it into the Imperial Cinema. And interesting enough, it showed Bollywood films. So on a Sunday, you could come down here and watch a Bollywood film back in the 70s. And I have memories of coming here and watching Bollywood films, the big films of the day like Sholé and um, Bobby and things like that at this place. Um, Actually, the best bit was the hot food. They did samosas and stuff inside, which was rather nice. Um, the only trouble is you couldn't make a cinema work one day a week. So the Sunday was never going to be enough. So what they did on the rest of the week was actually show triple X adult rated films. And the interesting thing was they had the poster boards outside. And the poster boards outside were all for those rather naughty blue films. Um, and I remember getting a clip round the ear because you'd queue up to go in there and occasionally as a young kid, your eye would turn to go and look at cop an eyeful of the poster and my mum would stand next to me and she'd normally clip me around the head and tell me not to look at the dirty posters. So um, they were complained to and they did actually block them after a little while. Mums can be such small sports, can't they? So just off Lincoln Road here, just down Northfields, you've actually got behind me Unity Hall. It's another one of those community halls like St Barnabas, no longer there. This one wasn't church affiliated though. This is actually 
a union affiliated hall because if you look down there there are actually stones dedicated to the railway workers and their children the women of the railway workers families so clearly this was something that was built back in well it's 1927 it says up there on the uh, stone so back in the 1920s it's obviously built a facility for the workers and their families to maybe kind of meet up socialize etc so it kind of was one of those social clubs before you know maybe opposite to a pub where families could get together. The reasons I have memories of this place is because back in the kind of 1980s, we used this hall for discos. We put live bands on there. It's got a stage at one end of it, and we put the bands up there, and we had the disco on the floor, and it was, again, primarily rock discos, but also people booked it for birthday parties and stuff around the local area. So, again, some really interesting memories of these old community halls. It's now obviously used by Parker, which is the uh, you know asylum and refugee uh, centre, and they're doing a you know bang up job so again of supporting people that have come to Peterborough. In 2021, most people are heading to the cinemas right now to watch a new James Bond film, No Time to Die, which is pretty good. Back in the 1920s, probably 1928, they would have been heading to this place. No, not it wasn't Machine Mart then. This was the Princess Cinema, and back then this was showing sh films like Q Ships, which is primarily kind of propaganda kind of films and stuff but it carried on showing other films and it ran to about 1958 when I think they showed The Kid the Charlie Chaplin film was the last film that was shown here before this place shut down but it is quite a large building obviously now occupied by Machine Mart but back then this was a suburban cinema so as you can see this is Lincoln Road again where just the noise behind me uh, it's now Euro supermarket and above it it looks like a table tennis place but the place above it uh, used to be the Derek Brown Dance Academy. You know, for anybody that watches a bit of Strictly, there's a real connection there because Derek, his wife Edna, ran the Dance Academy for decades. They literally taught Peterborough how to dance. And when uh, Derek sadly passed away in around 2016, even Len Goodman, a 10 from Len, um, sent his uh, condolences because Len um, was great friends with Derek and with Edna. Uh, because they all toured the dance circuits and they knew each other from there. So, sadly, early this year, 2021 February, I believe, Edna passed away too. So, you know, there was some real legacy left behind of people that danced, whether they were getting, you know, dancing, learned to dance for their wedding day or whatever, or whether it was just something they wanted to follow. But that was the old studio there, and sadly it's no more. But yeah, this area's got a lot of food shops now. I mean, just the diversity of food stores, um, there is something to be said for the different tastes. The fact you can get Portuguese cuisine, you can get kind of Turkish and Arabic, um, Jamaican, West Indian, whatever, uh, as well as traditional Indian, Chinese, and a bit of fish and chips too, all in one place. Here we are at the corner of Cobden Avenue and Lincoln Road. This was the site of a rather big school. It was the County Grammar Girls School here, which was here for probably over 100 years. And then uh, sadly it moved off to become Ken Stimson. Um, back in the sort of 90s. You had some really illustrious students who actually came here. You had Marjorie Pollard, who was celebrated by this blue plaque behind me, and she was involved in actually the England hockey team and then set up the Women's Cricket Association here in Britain. So the other blue plaque here celebrates Daphne Jackson Ovi. Da Daphne Jackson actually a nuclear physicist. So what's interesting is I actually went to a school called Jack Hunt, and I had no idea who Mr Hunt was. Actually, Jack Hunt was linked to this school here he was one of the, the not just a governor but he was one of the kind of original kind of educators and founders and the honor was to name a school after him so i actually found that after about 40 years so i went to the bloke school no idea who he was but jack hunt was associated with the county girl school here which when it closed the site was vacated it later on became as you see sheltered accommodation and housing for um, elderly senior citizens and it's been like that for quite some time but a really really huge history of students and educating people in Peterborough. Okay, well look, I can't finish off the history of Peterborough without talking pubs. This was the Norfolk. So the Norfolk was kind of really the place to go for music, for a lot of students. Uh, I remember myself being at the college um, and coming here. It was quite something. Uh, so you had live bands on. You had probably one of the best sit-down Space Invader machines as well. So that was another incentive. And they actually did quite a reasonable curry, which um, I never told my mum that, but it was actually quite nice. So there was some good food, but it was a really good atmosphere. A lot of bikers, a lot of people just into their music. I remember out here, people used to sit down here literally with a beer on a summer's day um, and make the most of it, maybe, you know, in between the bands playing. But that was a Norfolk pub back in the day. In doing these magical history tours, I've really enjoyed making them. I really do hope you've enjoyed watching them. 
But for me, it's been really important. The thing I take away from this is, look, and I hope maybe others will take away from it, is Peterborough's history. Yes, it's got ancient history with the cathedral and flag fen, etc. But our modern history is pretty good too. You know, we've made a lot of people welcome in Peterborough, including my own family, growing up here, um, becoming part of the fabric of Peterborough. Peterborough's got a lot to offer, especially if you decide you want to make it your home and you've built your life around it. I've just done that. My family did it, I've done it, I'm doing that now with my own kids and grandkids as well. Doing these walks just made me realise how amazing a place this really is. So all I'd say to people is, walk around, open your eyes, have a look at Peterborough. Don't just look for the negatives in Peterborough. There's a lot of positives to be had here. So please, don't be down on Peterborough. It's not a bad place to be, and do enjoy it.